Woo. Uh, welcome to episode four of Building Legacy. It's squeaky bum time. Uh, what do I mean by that for people who may not necessarily understand that vernacular? Well, the uh, I set myself a bit of a countdown as to when we are going to start raising funds, to be moving to an office, to get things going. And it's, it's coming together um, a lot quicker, a lot quicker. Um, and really excited about it and what it really means for my role as a CEO and the, the existing work that I do. Um, but yeah, really exciting. So a couple of highlights since we spoke last time. Got myself a little bit of a haircut. Uh, that's not relevant to the actual company, but I just thought I'd tell you that for the people who are miserable will be at me and my beard shaping and my and my haircut. Uh, so for those of you who are already in my um, network, you probably would have seen that I did an amazing, or had an amazing time at recording a podcast with um, Jerry from Reboot. Um, I'll definitely put the, the link underneath so that if you missed it, you'd be able to go and um, find out about um, a, a bit more of an insight into why I started um, Legacy and, and some of the ambitions. Jerry went deep with me. It was a quite an emotional podcast. I think it's probably the most um, emotional interview I've had. Um, and I was able to share a lot of insight and, and Jerry pulled a lot of apps, um, really fantastic things out of me. Um, and I felt very comfortable being able to share them, even though it was, as, as I said, quite emotional thinking about how big the task was. Um, the second thing is, again, being going out there looking at office spaces um, and just really thinking about, you know, look, when this um, does kick in, who am I going to be working with? What does that office space look like? We have a front runner at the moment, um, but keeping our options open. Um, the front runner is a great space for the culture. There'll be a lot of other um, businesses in there, not necessarily just tech, but um, organizations that have been founded by um, majority black founders. So I'm quite excited to explore that as our first, but as I said, keeping our options open. Third kind of update I can give is around the courses. So um, there are two primary courses that I'm working on at the moment as the, the, the first ones that I want to be able to have around this virtual incubation. The first one is about investment and making sure that individuals who do want to go and get angel or VC or any other kind of funding that they are ready and things are in place and making sure that those who are members of our community can have access to really good quality um, um, education around that. And obviously, as a pitch coach, me giving individuals those heads up as to what would actually work in doing that. Uh, what else? Um, the website, my website is, uh, the website's currently down at the moment because we're actually doing a bit of a redesign. Um, I thought rather than just go with the kind of like the, um, almost like the half-baked one. That, no, it's not half-baked. Let me, I shouldn't say that because I, I knocked it up, but I got a web designer who can come in and has been really doing some, she's been doing some amazing work in terms of making sure that all the, uh, the details are done on, um, on the content that we want on the site. And she's been absolutely fantastic. Uh, priceless, I've totally recommend it to anybody. Um, I, I'm gonna wait until the site's done uh, and then I will definitely give a link so people can go and see what she does as well. Uh, and then finally, uh, again, just um, finalizing the last details of our, uh, um, of our funding. It's a really interesting space because to go out and, and work with a number of organizations who want to help you to do equity crowdfunding online, it's an interesting experience. And I found that many of the um, existing uh, platforms, they charge like maybe 6 to 7% of the actual fundraise. So let's just say for the sake of argument, if you're raising a million, you already you already have to cater for £60,000 of that cost for being on that equity um, pla um, platform. Personally, I've gone down the route of Seed Legals. Um, I like Seed Legals. I do believe, big shout out to them, and I'll do the link at the bottom as well. Um, uh, I love the system that they have from the employee contracts uh, straight through to IP for everyday investors who will be involved in what we do as well. Uh, and of course, being able to create a, a concrete way of giving documents to those who everyday investors who will be investing in the company for this round. Um, it is uh, it's a powerful platform. So yeah, I'm really going to big them up. See Legals, I think you do an absolutely great job. Um, as I said, you know, obviously started working with them. And for me, it's a lot more, not everybody knows the details they're dealing with when they're crowd equity crowdfunding, but these guys are on it. These guys know their shit, man. They are good. So um, yeah, that's it. That's the update. Um, again, as I said, uh, promising to keep everybody updated with this for at least... Uh, a whole year as um, we build out this company. Um, at some point, I'm going to introduce you to the guys who I believe will be part of my core executive team. 
also thinking about my advisors and who I want on my advisory board, but really excited about doing this. And yes, you know, look, um, it is groundbreaking and, um, you know, there isn't anywhere else in the UK that there is an incubator specifically focused on black tech founders. And again, as I say, I make no apologies about that. I'm really excited about it. I think it's going to be quite unique. And I hope that there are many other niches and many other um, uh, spaces in tech where people aren't catered for who can copy our model. Excited about it. No apologies here. So, yeah, that's my update. Uh, have a great week and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.